But the problem is this, you're right, 4% with the only people who are processed according to the statistics. It's outrageous. We don't, 4%. So there's a massive, massive backlog. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the setup to do this. So we need to address it. And the problem, what's happened, as you rightly point out, it's become a political hot potato. You mentioned about immigration. It, you're, you're described with all sorts of the ist terms. And, and that's the sort of issue. And when we come on to good old Gary, that's what, what, what he was trying to say about looking at the wording that we use with the sort of policy. It needs to be addressed, but it needs to be addressed in a humane and practical way. But let's get the facts right. Let's have more light and less heat, I always and say. I, I agree, and also I will say it again, and I know that you agree with this, Rene. I don't believe if you're in a more deprived area and you can't get your child into a school or yep. you can't, um, you know, you don't have decent public transport or you can't get a GP's appointment, and yet there is a very high migrant population there naturally you're going to say well look what's going on here and that doesn't make you racist that makes you worried about your family and i think that that's okay yeah I, and i think you're right and when we unpack this sort of, what i love about this show is you you do exactly that you you get to the facts you get behind the rhetoric you get behind the sort of sensational headlines and actually and that is what as you said it is yeah. it's allism isn't it that's what gary was saying because in 1930s well you will come on to this in 1930s it wasn't just germany there were problems in america there were problems over here the language they were concerned about immigration they were concerned about people coming over here. We can't afford to look after people already here, let alone any extra ones. But also the other reason why it's so utterly moronic is that, that you wouldn't have been able to in 1930s Germany <laughs> send any kind of critical tweet about, or well, not tweet anyway, you right, wouldn't okay, be able to ahead of your any, time. Anything, anything, just gonna be you know, say anything so uh, uh, outwardly criticising the government at the time because it wasn't allowed. So yeah. it, 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 it's contradictory in that way. And haven't you just hit the nail on the head, though? Is it not that now, in you know 2023, we have so many outlets to make our voices heard that we never had access to before? Yeah. So Gary Lineker, with his 8 million followers... 8.8. 8.8 million followers that let's make no mistake he's got because he's a presenter on Match of the Day, um, is able to make his views known and they go viral because it's far more than 8.8 .8 million people have now seen it looking at today's papers. But actually, I, like I say, you know, I, I don't know him personally. I'm, uh, people I know who know him say he's a really nice he guy. He is a really nice guy. But I, I, have you met him? A lovely guy, absolutely, and and he's offered me the job tonight to fill oh, in for him. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, doing, it. I, I'm oh. doing it. I'm doing it with our good friend Pat Sharp. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so that that'll be a brilliant show. Do join us. It's got to be a thrill. Um, but you know, I, I'm sure he's a nice guy. He's every right to he say is. what he wants to. But I I you cannot do it if you are paid that much money by the BBC. Oh. And as I say, for ten percent of that money, I'd gag myself. I, I I would do it for ninety nine percent of it. But the reality is this, Chris. Though, the money he's paid is so irrelevant. And no, I think it's when not. oh, it's no. totally. Why does it matter how much he's paid? Because it's our money. No, no, but you work at the reason they have to do it. And if he went to uh, one of the commercial channels, he would be paid far more. They only pay it because that's the going rate if you want to have a, a, a star. No, his, a just, I disagree materially with you on this one. Oh, look at you. you. We I never disagree. disagree. We even we coordinated never with colours. Look at Chanel, that. come on. Look, if he went to Sky, that's fine because they don't have an impartiality yeah. rule and he could say what he wanted. And I the can BBC. choose whether I take Sky. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The BBC, we have no choice. I don't watch the BBC. I don't even have a TV, so, but I have to so, pay so, the so, licence so, fee. So let's unpack this in the proper way then, because impartiality, you're right, there are very clear rules. Ofcom govern everybody. You've got to work on that sort of basis. Well, almost everybody. You've got to work on that sort of basis. If you're a news journalist, yes. you, you, you have to have be totally impartial. But you look at something, I don't, Jeremy Clarkson worked uh, for uh, Top Gear when he was a, a Sun columnist. You, you had Andrew Neil was the host of a political show and he got when cancelled. he was a column. Well, no, but that's for different reasons. Uh, and he was also not properly quoted when he was talking about Game of Thrones, was his little quote on that sort of basis, uh, for, for the other things. And he was cancelled because there was a fisty cuff over a steak. But Jeremy Clarkson had just been cancelled for his what he said about Meghan. Well, but again, and it's unfortunate because it's good <laughs> to look at both of these. What Jeremy actually was trying to do in his wonderful way, he's not sorry for what he wrote. What he, what he was sorry for is that uh, there was a bit of outrage. And he wasn't sorry about that either. Because I, I always say, if you want to draw a crowd, start a fight. Mm. You know, it's P.T. Barnum, this is what you do. And what better way? The stories at the moment are all about Gary Lineker, not about Rishi talking to Macron. Yes, and there's like a, a little column somewhere on that. So we need to look at that. So Clark, let's deal with Clarkson first of all. What he was saying in his column was, actually it's a quote from Game
Game of Thrones, there's a scene where they threw all sorts of excrement and other bits yeah. and pieces, and that was the one. And he talked about Meghan Markle. But he didn't but reference the Game He of didn't Thrones. reference it. And he said, well, that's what I meant. Would it have made a difference? Is he sorry? No, of course he's not sorry. Uh, and I think you work on the sort of basis that that's a column, that's how he writes and so on and so forth. Everybody he took offence. He doesn't work for the BBC. He doesn't yes. work for the, but, but does it matter that you yes. work for the BBC? Yes. Why, does it, why does it matter because, that works for the BBC? Because, as René was saying, we are um, forced to pay for Gary Lineker's salary. Now, you're quite right. If Jerry Clarkson says something that I don't like, no. I can say, I'm never watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire again. I could say, I hate ITV for employing him. I'm never going to watch ITV again. In my life, I, I, I won't be paying anything for it. It's my decision as a consumer whether I consume it. The BBC is held to a different standard because I don't have a choice about mm -hmm. whether I get to pay for it or not. So, therefore, that's why I have more of a say in what they can say so, or not. So, none of the presenters, just to be clear on this, you're saying that none of the presenters on the BBC are entitled to exercise their right of freedom of speech? Uh, what I said at the Is start of the mean? show, and I'll say it again, I think if you're a news presenter, you are held to a higher standard. Absolutely. I think if you're a non-news presenter, um, there is a bit more leeway I do think the BBC well, what can you needs say? to get can their you say house. I support the policy? I, I, I don't think you can directly say yeah. you support or, or disagree with a government So you're not policy. allowed of you? No, not if you're a BBC presenter, no. Nobody's allowed of you. That, that's an outrageous that, thing to say. But we've you, seen that Andrew can't... Marr has left because he wants to be able to have a view. No, but, but as a general principle, well, let's look at it, because if you're looking at the contractual side, firstly, Gary, and I'm a lawyer who do those sort of things, look at the contractual side, Gary is um, a freelancer. It works through that sort of basis. The terms of his contract would be a question about whether he's breached those. Um, and normally in these sort of contracts, you would have if somebody's brought into disrepute or so on and so forth, and you could argue that. The whole question about freedom of speech is that can, and I think it's an out, a really dangerous claim to say that anybody who works for the BBC cannot share an opinion. Uh, because no, 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 share a direct opinion in favour or against a government policy. I do think there's more leeway if you're not in news right. that you can have, a, you know, it could probably have a bit of an opinion on football for well, instance but not massively <laughs> we know he supports leicester city for okay instance. yes so so on that people can go well okay he's not a news presenter but if you are going to have a direct opinion on government policy i think you're on very dodgy ground if you are paid by the bbc now you have the right to not work for the bbc and you can have as many opinions yeah. as you like it's actually not about what he said about a government policy it's about the fact he said it when he's paid by and, us and, and that, that's the interesting thing because i'm sure the great british public who tune in their millions to watch today's show would disagree with you uh, a large proportion the same way as a lot of the bbc people and, and presenters are turning around and supporting gary and saying, well actually we're not going to do the show um, as a result of it if we're not allowed to have an opinion or to state an opinion that's got to be wrong there's got to be a balance between the phrasing of it i think is unfortunate but again as i said at the beginning he didn't directly compare it to the Holocaust because the Holocaust was actually not in the 30s it was in the 40s so let's get those facts no, right to, to not but, the Holocaust but to Nazi Germany oh no I, I, I get it and, and it's a, I, I disagree totally as, as uh, the, the wonderful uh, uh, Voltaire w w would have said uh, well, Evelyn Beatrice Hall wasn't it? I disapprove of what you say but I will defend yeah. it to the death your right to say it I think the reality is but you're raising a much wider question which I do think um, I strongly disagree with is that BBC presenters should be allowed to have an opinion I think if you're in news, you have to remain impartial. And the rules are already in place but about that's fine. that. I think, yes, you're right. Let's take away the licence fee. Well, that's also a debate. I hosted, you know, <laughs> I hosted for the Royal Television Society. Uh, everybody talked about the BBC for 100 years. I hosted something with Greg Dyke and various other things, looking at the future of the BBC. And he turned around and said, look, what do we want? If you want an independent, good question, broadcaster who can hold everybody to account, then how's that going to be funded? Because it's not just from the commercial side. You they're, need not, they're not independent because they, they already, they have the Royal Charter that comes up. They have the licence fee as well, which is essentially controlled by the government i would fund i've always said this i would fund a basic bbc out of ring fenced general taxation okay very basic um you know news um you know radio um probably bbc one and that's about it um and then i would have a basic website 
but then I would have subscription tiers for everything beyond that. So iPlayer, I subscribe to, I pay for. Um, you know, if I want BBC Two, if I want BBC Three, if I want BBC Four, if I want the website that gives me recipes and GCSE stuff, I have to pay for all yeah. of that. Therefore, it removes the licence fee, it removes the criminalisation of licence fee, the BBC gets some ring fence money for its basic services, and then I would probably... Because I quite like the BBC, actually. I would probably buy it. I probably would buy the full subscription, but it's my choice yeah. to yeah. then. And this is interesting because I had this discussion with Tim Davey and I was saying that a number of others. And what we looked at is that it is the, the, the best alternative. It's not perfect, uh, the licence fee, but if you looked at subscription and how that might work in various other countries, the difficulty is what you lose as a result. Because it's not part of it. You have to... St the first question you have to ask is not, is the licence fee worthwhile? It is to be, why lose? do we, ha why do we have the BBC? Why do well, they would say, and I, this is the question about impartiality, uh, the, the ability to hold the government to account. Why? Whether they do hold the government to account is, is a different matter. Hold the government well, to that's account. the thing. Look at Are COVID, they fulfilling look their at charter? what's happened over the last three years. I think Think you make an interesting point about Clarkson and Lineker and I think actually that's the crux here and it comes back to your question Christo at the beginning you know would people be you know supporting Lineker if he'd have said the opposite and we have a split in society here where people didn't support Clarkson didn't support Andrew yep. Bridgen but they do support Lineker and when I say people again I go back to that North London clique living in their gated communities earning a lot of money thinking oh it's fine it's fine you're and, just and a, a racist and a general issue as well here in the UK maybe it's as a result of you're right, you know, who has the loudest voices? Maybe it's as a result of having Tory government for the last 13 years, but if you are, your views are centre-right, you are, are seen as less desirable in media circles. Mm. And just going back to the, the, the point, what we would lose from the BBC, if you had a basic BBC paid for through taxation, right. firstly, no government is going to come in and say, we'll abolish that and get rid of the BBC, firstly. But secondly, it's that general taxation that could provide the programming that is that doesn't rate particularly well, well. And that's the, the, the songs yeah. of praise yeah. the um you know the, the the regional news the stuff that actually um is part of the bbc's remit that isn't very commercially viable yes. i've no problem with my general taxes paying for those programs what i've a problem with is being forced to pay for everything else so any of the presenters on those programs aren't allowed to view though is that what you're saying absolutely yeah okay. they're not allowed so, to so that would be the condition but you then need to specify that in their contract because it's not at the moment absolutely but they're paying and, and for I think, nicely so, so, uh, like i said i've said many times yeah. You pay me one point three million pounds, I would I would d strip off, put on a fluorescent unitard, and whistle Dixie. I will pay you one point four not to. Okay. Which will be good. Well, thank go? you for that. Um, <laughs> now, now, as they say, now we know your price, I, Christo. We'll start a campaign. I, I tell would, you what, on the Great British Public, we'll start it now. Really. I would do think? anything <laughs> they ask me to do for that amount of money. So it's really? not beyond the road. Yes. Why? They, Why would you sell out? I, mean, I, I, I don't know. They do I, sell it. It might be your secret fantasy. I was still selling I, out because it would be my decision. Or I could say, right, actually, you know what? I'm going to go to a commercial broadcaster instead where I can do whatever I like. Or I'm going to make the decision to be on Match of the Day, which is a prestigious show, yeah. but I'm going to realise that because I'm paid for from the public, but, 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 but I have responsibilities. But actually, your point, though, to be fair, Christo, is not that it's the 1.3 million. Your point is about the whole licence fee, if I get it. So even the lowliest... BBC presenters on Top and Saintney, and that's how much they get if they're lucky. Um, they, and that's a vast majority, are way below the hundred fifty thousand. If you're paid, by, if your point is not one point three million, your point, if I understand it rightly, is that whoever and however much they're paid at the BBC, they cannot state their opinions. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. So but, well, let's get that clear. Yes. Yeah. Look what we're doing here. Look what we've just done in this room in the last ten minutes. Yes. We talked about Gary Lineker and not mentioned the five hundred million that's pound that Sunak is giving. And, and that's the French point. Absolutely. to stop the votes. And, that's, and also what's interesting is so much about is like a, a lot of these things on the BBC with the Jonathan Ross, you might remember, and phoning up poor old Andrew Sachs's yeah. granddaughter. You have, you no, have nobody really had like a couple of people complained about it, but the media all rushed in to say, oh, this is outrageous, and it gave it the worldwide audience as a result. Well, that's the media's that's happened. job, because yeah. the media was saying, well, actually, is there not... Uh, look, maybe it's unfair, but is are you not to be held to a slightly higher standard if you are paid for out of licence fees money? Now, again, if 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 Russell Brand and Jonathan Ross did that in a commercial station, um, well, the market would speak for itself. Either yep. the uproar would would make the commercial 
at people and say like they did with Jeremy Clarkson will fire them yes. or I could switch off and go it's yes. nothing to do with me and then that would the market forces would dictate yes. but on the BBC I have no choice that my money goes to pay for that content yeah and oh, no, that's, I, I, that's I mean, why they have you're a different we, we, standard we disagree um, uh, respectfully which is what I love about this sort of stuff um, but we should also talk because we were talking we about should. the media yes. uh, about many other things but first of all can I just wish because I'm, I'm obsequious and things like that it is the 71st anniversary of the 21st birthday for Rupert Murdoch uh, he's 92 today wow happy birthday no, but you haven't done that yet happy birthday Rupert, I've been a massive fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> he pays Happy your check. It's, it's got to be good. I'm talking about that. I'm and sure again, if you whistle Dixie, we'll sort that birthday out. birthday message to you, Rupert, is pay me 1.3 million. I'll do anything you want. <laughs> and I say, Rupert, pay him 1.4 and he won't, which yeah, is going to be good. Anything. We'll make that make sense. Uh, no, uh, I mean, fantastic. That, 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 that's Happy almost, birthday. And what I will say is, my God, I... I Sometimes I'm just like in my in my early forties, can't be bothered to get out of bed. My early thirties, I thank you. He's ninety. He's, he's 92. Absolutely amazing. It's a secret to a long life, I, though, isn't I, it? Fun, a picture working. of a long life. Just working and, hard. And yeah. what I love, the newspapers today, which we'll, we'll, we'll look at at one stage, um, what I love about it is they're all talking about living a long life and being less stressed. Rupert's fantastic. 92, you say, 71st birthday of his 21st, 71st anniversary. Uh, and glorious. And th 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 he should tell us the secret. It's very Greek, that. I, I think it is, isn't it? Tomatoes. And Greek people. If you can find them. When they stop working, they die. Yeah, oh, that's, that's just not Greek people, Christo. We see it all the time. I see people retire, men in particular, because women carry on working, of course, because they carry on doing the housework yeah. and everything else. Men retire and are looking forward to their long retirement, and sadly, don't they? Don't. Well, you have to have a mission in life. We, we, we looked at this beforehand, and I know they're trying to encourage the over 50s to work again. And if you don't have a mission in life, mm. um, and AI are talking about robotics and how that's going to replace virtually every job ever, we're going to miss a mission in life. And as a result, you'll probably find mortality rate will go, um, the, well, mortality rate well, will I've, go up and life expectancy will go down. You need to have a, a, a central, central purpose. I plan on dying on air. I will just keep <laughs> but going. But now? I, I don't know what the rate is. Yes, well, I tell you now. There it, is a doctor in the house, but. The, well, uh, just, okay. But <laughs> And a lawyer. We'll, we'll handle the greedy relatives. You can let me go. Out. You can let me go at half past eight because then it's over halfway and I get the fee. Oh, is that right? Is that what happens? So, okay. yeah, res try and resuscitate me. Is that your contract? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, After halfway? Half halfway through, I get the fee. Oh, no. <laughs> so, if, can, can we stop the halfway through taking your clothes off? You can stop the CPR off. at 8.31, <laughs> okay. okay? Just so you know. Um, all right, when we come back, we'll do a few oh, different papers, stories I've heard of those. from the I'll newspapers as well because there's been one that's dominating uh, this morning and then after eight o'clock we are going to return to the actual story in question it's not just about Lineker it's the migrant story we'll talk to Mike Buckley about that and don't forget as well in an under an hour's time Isabel Oakshot will be here to tell us why she's stepping back from discussing those lockdown files arguably the biggest story of the year so lots between now and 10 o'clock all here live from the Talk Radio studio, this is Talk TV. As well. Okay, Andrew, you've been looking through the papers. Let's uh, move away from Move Lineker. away from Lineker and Sunak and boats and everything. Let's oh, talk about sex. Okay. Um, on the front page, first of all, let's start this off. Matt Cartoon, which is always brilliant. I love the Matt Cartoon. Uh, he says, uh, a, a, a teacher doing a review with some parents, uh, your son is falling behind in sex education. He could only name 47 of the 100 different genders. Uh, I thought it was rather, rather fun. I think it's brilliant. Um, uh, what is in the papers about well, But it's a lot about sex as well. There's, uh, in the Times, on page um, uh, uh, 11 they're talking about pupils left tearful by unscientific lessons in sex education free for all and apparently there was a, a youngster who said she'd been at, taught at a london's girls school about gender identity including that children as young as three could be giving signals that they were transgender um, and apparently there was all sorts of outrage about that sort of stuff so we need to look at what is actually happening because okay. it's all about these myths and so on and so forth. Is this happening in the schools? Is it right to happen? And everybody's going to have a strong view on that. Um, and then what do we need to do about it? Because it's right to have respect, absolutely. Of course. But taking things too far at, at an age when people are impressionable and so on and so forth is not, not going to be and right. And taking away parental responsibility. Chris, so I was reading a book last week called Iggy Peck Architect. Oh, mm. that's rather good. Uh, my, one of my favourites. Okay. And the Iggy has two mummies. Right. And Alice and I have never had that conversation, and she just sees Mummy and Daddy, obviously. But as we were reading it, we got to that page, and there's a picture. They don't say it, there's just a picture. And she went, oh, two mummies. 
And that's it. And she just passed on by and it wasn't a big deal. Good. And she just accepted that. It's differences that cause division. And what happens yes. is, is it becomes part of the, the narrative that there are, celebrate differences, it's fine, but it's about the context and the content of what you it say. Is, Alice has a brother who's brown and she's as blonde and blue-eyed as they come. She doesn't notice. It, exactly. He's her brother. Get rid of that because then you get rid of prejudice. But as Christo rightly says, it's about the context and what's actually said. But Firstly, I don't know if any of my teachers were married because they never discussed their home life with right. me and I think that's where it should stay. Secondly, okay. it then morphs into where are we going to this story? But but, but, but Renee, um, just picking up on that point, you are, however, happy, because you actually agree, I'll be, I'll be mm. the devil's advocate, you're actually happy that children do understand that two yes. women can love each other. Oh, no, I, men, think, I think and, you, and just want the, you just want I to want make the you just, no, And, and yeah. then, then we all agree. Look, there we are, the peacemaker. We'll, we'll make that make sense. Yeah. Um, one of the interesting things, though, and it's still talking about sex, and, and the, the danger is that, that the shocking revelation in The Guardian today is one in ten teenagers uh, say they're addicted to porn. Uh, and I think if you're going to put uh, all these sort of things into context, there has to be love at the, the, the heart of everything. And that's quite a worrying statistic. And it's where we as a society, whether it's the parents or the school or whatever, we need to crack down on this. And the biggest problem is, is access to everything. Oh, these phones access, access. nowadays, it's access, isn't I would, it? I wouldn't allow my child to have a phone until they're about 18. I, I, really I actually wouldn't. agree. Uh, but I'm way more in favour of a school at least saying something proportionately yeah. but than a but child it's, it's learning it now. But it's got to be more than just the physical act, doesn't it? And it's going back to the, the brilliant love. point you made earlier. That's, that's what I'm saying. So if you talk about relationships and mm. how people can love one another but treat them with respect, that then becomes part of the narrative. As soon as you badden something, it becomes, you know, we've got to go and do this. And it's not just the person with the mobile phone. But they're going to be sharing other images and, and they all get a misunderstanding look, of what everything's about. Had, it's about love. We all had... But, what I will say, and I agree on yeah, that we, stuff, we all is agree. Ridiculous. We all agree. I just think of what I was like at age sort right. of ten or eleven at school, and how much when I was getting all this sex education, it might have made a difference to my life to just have known that there are, might be two guys that might be in love, yeah. and yeah. that oh my god, because I just felt like I was an alien. You and, have made and, me think and, about and, this and as well. It, it was it just. Okay. It, it, it diminished me so massively. Yeah. But I'm respectful of your point because I realise that there is a line mm. and I realise there is parental autonomy. Andrew, we've got to leave it there. Oh, there you really go. That was a quick paper review. I'll bring some next time. Thank <laughs> you. Good.